Tonight is the pre-town meeting required by law in order to have us vote by Australian ballot tomorrow. We're not uh, we're not amending anything tonight. Don't don't try to do that. That's all part of the ballot process. The flag is in the back, and it's our practice to say the Pledge of Allegiance. If you could turn around. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, there are... Uh, there are five articles. I'll read each one, and then presumably people will have the opportunity to ask questions and find the answers. Uh, if any of you are not uh, residents of the town of Berlin, I would ask the assembly if you would have any objection if they spoke at this meeting. Anyone have that, any objection? No, I'm, one, I'm, not, I'm a non-resident. But you don't object. I do not object. Okay, good. And uh, so it'd be good if, uh, when you do speak, you you stand up and you give us your name. And if you're not a resident, you don't have to tell us if you are a resident. But if you're not, so we know where that opinion is coming from. So the first article, the Berlin Town Center Gateway Improvements, <coughs> reads: Shell general obligation bonds or notes of the town of Berlin, payable from revenues derived from the town's general fund in an amount not to exceed $2,550,000, subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants and aid, that may, those words don't really belong there, be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of developing water, sewer, stormwater treatment roads and sidewalks in Berlin Town Center, the estimated cost of such improvements being <coughs> Two million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And uh, who is prepared to answer questions here? Uh, Tom Badowski, our assistant uh, at town administrator. Any questions about Article One, or what are your questions for Article One? Question. All, all I can add that. Uh, why don't you? Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the project? Yeah. Uh, I, I can. I can add that the, uh, uh, the. As you may know, the town received a, a new town center designation in uh, June of 2022 last year, uh, and something that the planning commission started about 25 years ago and has finally finally come to fruition. This is a uh, program that, that allows towns without a traditional downtown, like, like Berlin, to access uh, funds, technical assistance to, in effect, create a downtown. Uh, this is a 25-year program uh, uh, from the state. Berlin is, is the third recipient of a new town center. The other two are in Chittenden County. And, um, Berlin has a, a relatively small population compared to, to our neighbors in Chittenden County, and we're, we're very proud that we got this. Uh, we, at the end of the day, we hope that rural <coughs> communities can see what we have done as a community and use this as a springboard to bring development in, into their community. So what this does, uh, the, the town received May of this year uh, 3.8 acres uh, in in um, there was uh, the five towns that make up Washington Central Unified Union School District voted to approve to give that 3.0 acres to, to the town, and now that is the first property uh, coming into the gateway. Uh, if you uh, on, if you have the handout, there's a, a map attached. It's the it's the road. Uh, it's, it's coming off of Route 62, which is the current current Berlin Mall Road. It's envisioned to reconstruct and uh, realign that road, um, making it significantly more pedestrian friendly. Anybody who travels that road now knows that it's, it's hardly anything but pedestrian friendly. Uh, there'll be sidewalks, streetscapes, uh, street lights. Berlin was, was in instrumental in bringing the 
Chestnut Place, the 98-unit senior housing that you see there now built. On your little map, that you can see that it's the the T building at the top of your top of your map there, right across the street. Uh, Fox Run is 30 units of of uh, uh, workforce housing that's in its final stages of permitting from the town of Berlin. They plan on going to bid in the winter, uh, this coming winter, and starting construction in 2024, in the spring of 2024. Uh, uh, so this project has received two grants now, one a $500,000 grant and another uh, $205,000. We are now applying to Vermont uh, Agency of Transportation for an additional grant. We thought it was going to be about $300,000 we are going to request. Uh, they are now including stormwater in their applications, so we're going to be asking for a $700,000 grant from, from the Agency of Transportation. Those, uh, th uh, those applications are due to the state early December. We will likely hear in, in the spring of 2024 if Berlin gets awarded. Um, so, but, uh, but all those would reduce the All bond. those would re reduce the, the bond cost. Uh, oh yeah. uh, and uh, the, uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, I, I just want to make sure everybody understood that that reduces the amount that's, uh, uh, yeah. And, and, well, I guess that's it. If anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll remember what I was trying to think. To say. Questions? Over in the back. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm David Gibson. I'm a Berlin resident. I just want to make sure I understand what the numbers mean. It says that each of four parcels is each estimated at six million. That would be that's twenty-four million. It's the grand list value. What's that's what you think each parcel that will have a grand list value of about six million dollars. That's correct. And so that's not related to the amount being asked for. No. And there's not a subtraction from that to the grant. So there's no. like three different kind of numbers here. There's grant numbers. Yep. There's some kind of value. And then there's the cost that you're asking for and so forth. Yeah. What we're trying to do with that number is to show that the value added that the community is going to receive from from uh, uh, this, this, this investment. <coughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Gary Shelley, uh, town of Berlin. Uh, I'm wondering uh, who would be responsible for the maintenance of this. These improvements, the roadway, the roads and sidewalks. The town of Berlin has said that they would take over the maintenance. Okay, so that would be additional <coughs> cost. Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing I was wondering about, uh, looking at the geometry of the, the roadway here, was consideration given to the fact that large delivery trucks will be using this road. Yeah. Yes. That's not a final design. That's mm -hmm. that's well, planning purposes. But uh, the folks from um, I'm going to forget their names. There, there, there was an uh, engineering firm out of Burlington designed it. So we believe that it'll allow a proper truck radius turn. Okay. Good question. Very good question. Anyone else? I have a question. It's Carl Parton. Go ahead. Uh, has the five hundred thousand dollar grant already been spent? That we received? It has not. So, we'll, okay, so the 2.5 <coughs> is an addition to that amount, or would that be subtracted from the 2.5? It, it would be subtracted. As the, the 205,000 will be subtracted from. Other questions on Article 1? Yes, sir. Yes. Is there any time frame for the building of the road, or? Um, we're trying to get it as much grant money as we possibly can. Right. And, and uh, this $700,000 ask that we get from VTrans, if, if it comes to fruition, that will pay for uh, over half of the project mm -hmm. with what we have in, in place. Uh, it would be staff, staff's recommendation to the select board that then we would we would go to bid in short order if we get to all those grants. Okay. Any 
Anybody what else? Question? Yeah, my name is Jane Fallon. Um, so are we voting on a bond for the two million five hundred fifty thousand? Yes. That's okay because it doesn't say we're voting for a bond. It just says Berlin Town Center gate improvements. The warning is is. No, it says shall general obligation bonds be issued. So it's asking you that. It's not on there. It's that's just the. Oh, okay. you know what? It's that's, that's a very brief. There's okay. the yeah. warning has is the question that's here, and I don't think there's. The, are there copies of that? I do have copies. If anybody wants to read the warning, I do. And I also I believe that would allow you to borrow uh, against to those bonds. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm Bob Richard, uh, Berlin. I'm just trying to get a, a concept, not on this particular article, but all of them, on how much it affects property tax. In other words, let's just let's assume um, you know you you get some federal funds and you get some matching, but for every million that the town has to pay, roughly how does that affect, we'll say, a hundred thousand dollar appraisal? I could give you rough figure. Yeah. Uh, so each the, the the three articles that impact the you as a resident, because Article Two and Article Three are not paid by the general fund. That's they're paid by the users of the sewer system and the users of the wastewater system. So um, to me, that's different than Articles One, Four, and Five. Okay. Uh, uh, for and it's a it's a rough number. Uh, if you don't have no current uh, what interest rates are going to be, but we estimate for Article One. Uh, with, without receiving the, the seven hundred thousand dollar grant we're going after, it would be about for a hundred thousand dollar home about thirteen dollars a year on your taxes. For the uh, uh, article four, which is the uh, uh, multi-use path, uh, we we'll, we'll talk about that later. It's, it's, it's another thirteen dollars per hundred thousand dollars home, and the last one, uh, the um, ice rink improvements, it's about seven dollars and seventy cents per hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, you answer. Fine, fine. Had to get it <laughs> in my head of yep. you know what what all this means in dollars and cents, and that doesn't sound unreasonable. Another question. I got another question. Carl Parton again. Uh, I have a great deal of faith in our select board who probably have had more detail uh, explained to them than what we got off the website or off the warnings. I noticed only three of five of you signed the warning on the website. Was that was there a reason for that? Is my question. I believe uh, Dave Sawyer wasn't there and someone else was ill. We just had the three of us. Okay. I guess the question is, is there a dissent? <laughs> no. Not that we're aware of. No. no. Okay. <clears throat> Article 1, so we go to Article 2. Well, this one comes with a, a film, so it be more entertaining. <laughs> uh, shall general obligation bonds or notes for the town of Berlin payable from revenues derived from the operation of the town's municipal sewer system in an amount not to exceed $2,200,000 subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants and aid, be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of repairs and replacement of 50-year-old sewer line, the estimated cost of such improvements being $2,200,000. And uh, you, sir, are the videographer here? Yep. Want to introduce it or? Mike Smith is the design engineer on this project and he's uh, helped us develop the budget. Good. So, as not to raise any expectations, this will not be entertaining. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can tell you a joke afterwards if you want, but. Um, my name is Mike Smith. I work with Weston and Sampson. We have an office up in Waterbury. Been around since 1899, about 800 people now, and we do civil environmental engineering, water, sewer, <coughs> wastewater plants, 
industrial wastewater, that kind of thing. So that's the first four slides. I'm going to be respectful of your time and jump into the, the meat of it here. Again, this is all just about us. Tom can tell you more. So, um, Hospital Hill, where you're headed down the bank to CVS, if you were to go down that way, there's a sewer line that runs from the corner of Fisher Road, that intersection by the hospital, down past the hospital parking lot, goes down toward a substation down there, and then it cuts goes underneath the highway and then it goes down through the woods over the bank behind the tire place what's yeah. and the, that, old, the old the old wastewater treatment, treatment plant right there used to be in the 70s there was a wastewater treatment plant which has been abandoned but that sewer line still conveys the sewage from this area of town down to that point to a main pump station then it kicks it over to Montpelier right by the hospital parking lot a uh, section of the sewer broke about a year ago and there was a minor discharge and Tom reached out to us because we were currently doing an asset management plan to look at the entire wastewater collection system for the town. So we did a little extra investigative work there and found that the pipe, the sewer line, which is rigid and it's got bell and spigot joints so they kind of stick into each other, got pushed by unstable soils, which pushed it away from the hospital parking lot toward the ditch. This is also being exacerbated by continuous erosion of water going down through that ditch line. It's cutting it deeper and deeper and deeper, making the soils even less stable. So the, the pipe failed. It is back in service and it's in operation right now, but it's not sustainable the way it is. In order to replace that section of pipe, we're going to have to not only replace it, but stabilize the soils so that the pipe stops migrating. So it's about nine, almost a thousand feet of pipe from the corner of Fisher Road toward the substation. Um, some of the impacts of this project not being done, uh, it's a major environmental liability for the town very costly, very expensive. The state's aware of the, the failure and their anticipation is that the town will do something to repair it. This is, this area, these four corners up here designated as a large commercial district, which I'm sure you all know, um, serves the airport, the hospital, the schools, and the new town center. All of the wastewater from those entities goes through this pipe which is the bulk of the sewage generated within the Berlin collection system. So it's a critical, a critical piece of your infrastructure. This is just a, an aerial photo with some, some of the stuff that we picked up from a quick field survey. This is Route 62 headed down towards CVS. That's the ramp. The substation is down here. It's hard to see. And the sewer line Fisher Road is up here, but the sewer line comes down through and the pipe came apart, the existing <laughs> pipe came apart right about in this area between two sewer manholes. So it's not a, it's not in, uh, it's not a matter of just dropping in another manhole or putting in a, a repair with 10 feet of pipe. It's going to require stabilizing the soils because the entire line's in danger of failure. The project cost, uh, the construction subtotal, and I'll, I'll get into how that broke down and why it seems as large as it is, is $1.3 million. <coughs> if the project is funded through SRF, engineering fees for, for uh, preliminary design, final design, and then construction phase engineering services are capped at about $300,000. Uh, that's because the state of Vermont uses a fee curve. Contingencies right now, because there isn't a final design, we carried it at 30% for budgeting purposes so that you don't get part way through the project and find out you didn't set aside enough money. There's some construction easements. 
that it will probably be required temporarily, and that may cost some money. We approximated that at about 25000 And then typically the town will have some internal administrative costs. So for planning, we carried half a percent of the total construction cost for that. All in is $2.2 million, which is what the moderator just mentioned was on the, the bond article. <clears throat> so that's a breakdown of the cost. So the project includes, as I mentioned, stabilization of those soils around the sewer line. So you've got this ditch line with the hospital parking lot being up here on top of one of the banks, and the sewer line is actually in the bank. So to get down to the soils that are unstable and failing, we've got to do, and also to replace the pipe, we have to do more than just excavate down to the pipe. We have to open that area up a little bit and put in some better material and some drainage. So the stabilization is an expensive piece. Uh, complex traffic control because there's a lot going on as you can imagine right at that, that intersection and we're going to have construction vehicles coming and going and serving that area. Bypass sewage pumping, that was on the order of $250,000 and what that means is we're going to have to set up temporary sewage pumping at least at this point to move the sewage around the construction site so that the, the, uh, the sewer line, so that sewage can continue to flow and we don't have backups or other is issues or discharges upstream of the construction site. Stormwater drainage, there's a bunch of stormwater structures that crisscross through that area. They're going to have to be addressed. We're going to be working in a wetland, which is up toward the corner or the intersection of Fisher Road. So that's going to require some, uh, some special consideration, uh, soil stabilization for the excavation. The existing pipe is asbestos cement. And it was commonly used in the 60s and 70s. It's all over the place. It is now considered a hazardous waste. So a piece of the cost is going to be to remove the pipe and get rid of it. It used to be common practice to crush it and leave it in the bottom of the trench and lay your new pipe on top of it. And the thought was, as long as it's still buried where it was, it's not a danger to anybody. But that the EPA is no longer taking that approach. So while it's not a huge expense to the project, it is an added expense that you wouldn't see otherwise on a sewer project. So then we have the new gravity sewer and manholes. And as I mentioned before, there'll be some fairly complex excavation support because we're trying to replace a pipe that's parallel to an embankment on the side of the embankment. So we've got to go back in a ways. It's, it's going to be a fairly complex uh, project. Uh, financing. So as Tom mentioned earlier, this particular article or the money voted under this article is going to be paid for by the connected sewer users, not by the, the taxpayers of the entire town. The town is considering SRF loan funding, which is a state revolving fund. The state loans out money for infrastructure projects like these, and as towns pay that money back, the state rolls it back out into other loans. Because it's got some federal money involved in it, or federal seed money, uh, the state does charge 2% financing fee, it's essentially interest, which is very low. Uh, I don't know what the commercial for. Well, the commercial is 5.3. 5.3. USDA is 4. USDA, another federal program that does similar infrastructure projects, is 4, you said, Tom? 4. So that's gone up. So the state's still holding it 2. Because it's a sewer line, it's expected the the asset itself, once it's built, has a design life of anywhere between 50 and 100 years. That outlives the life of the loan, which allows the town to spread that out over 30 years instead of the typical 20. If it was a sewage treatment plant, it would only be a 20-year loan. Payments would begin one year after the project is complete. And something else to consider is when the town applies to get on the state priority list for this type of work, you can also get in line for pollution control grants through the EPA, and there still are some ARPA funds left that could be contributed, all of which would pay down the, the loan principal. So your worst case is 
2% for 30 years on the eligible cost for the project, which would be engineering and construction, but not uh, land acquisition. That would be the worst case, which isn't bad. And it would only be offset or made better by grants that could be applied. But the town won't know if they have those grants until they apply for them and also if they're all on the uh, state priority list. And that's it in a nutshell. I wanted to be respectful of your times. I know you have other things to talk about. Anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. What is the definition of connected users? Who is that? Connected users are people who are paying a sewer bill. <clears throat> so anyone like who has a home or a business? Yep, homes, business, the hospital. So Not on the subject system. In, a, in a nutshell, the town has a sewer budget to cover all of the costs of owning and operating the sewer system plus treatment at Montpelier. And they divide that up into what's called an equivalent residential unit or ERU or an equivalent dwelling unit, some towns call it EDU. So typically one home, a two-bedroom or a three-bedroom home would be one EDU. The school would be many EDUs based on their flow. Uh, town offices would probably be like one EDU. The hospital would be a huge number of EDUs. They're about 65% of our customer base, the hospital. Yeah, there you go. So. In a nutshell, the hospital would pay for 65% of this project, con conceivably. <clears throat> Did that answer your question, or did I go off the rails? <laughs> you mentioned land acquisition. This might be a question for Tom. Who owns the land uh, where the, the line will be uh, repaired in, con in the construction? The, the town be? has a current right-of-way there. Um, we're hoping to stay within that right-of-way. We're not anticipating uh, much land acquisition at all, Carl. Some of that land acquisition cost would be like, could include temporary construction easements. Yeah. Um, if some of the work has to cross outside of the town's sewer line easement, or if access to the site needs to take place from private property like the hospital parking lot, some of those costs would be included in that as well. Yes, sir. Is this the only pipe that channels sewage to Montpelier sewage treatment plant? There's so it's, it's kind of like a tree. Yeah. Uh, this is the main branch that comes up the hill, but there's also another sewer line that comes from yeah, Dunkin' Donuts down on 302. Not the Berrytown line, Berry City line towards Montpelier. But this, the by and large, I'd say better than 90 percent of the town sewage flows through this, wouldn't it? I wouldn't say that much. I'd say 60-40. A any idea what this will cost a residential homeowner that is on the system? I know a lot of the town is not. I broke it down. Yeah, I, I didn't, I don't have it with me right now. You, you want me to, a rough number? Yeah. So, Tom asked me if I could take a quick look at this. Right now, right now, um, the town has 547 equi equivalent residential units. So again, 65% of those are with the hospital. But per, per ERU would be an increase of about $180 per year, per ERU. Mike, the ERUs that I gave you were our water customers. We have twice as many sewer customers and we have water so oh. that the so that would be by half. half yeah so ninety dollars a year per eru for the sewer customers thank you but, and that's that's based on that 2.2 million dollars i want to say too that worst case scenario yeah and and these are planning costs so the 30 percent contingency is going to drop when we get a final design and hopefully uh the numbers you know, right now with, with COVID, construction prices are all over the place. It does seem to be stabilizing a little bit. So that gives us more confidence in the numbers being good for another year. 
but there'll be another opportunity to do a revised opinion of cost after the final design is done and maybe we can find some efficiencies uh, with the design to help keep the cost lower. And, and also, as you just pointed out, so it's $90 per ERU per year increase, but if the town gets a PC grant or some ARPA money that they can buy that principal down with, that $90 is going to go down too. Yes, and that's just for 30 years, right? Correct. Correct. Any other questions? So the pipe currently is working, I'm presuming, and <coughs> when would this, I mean, is this an emergency or do we wait a year or two? Or? So technically the town could apply for the funding, calling this an emergency. Right now it's functioning, but if, if there was a backup uh, in the sewer line, which is how it was discovered in the first place, it's a gravity sewer pipe and it's very steep, mm -hmm. so the water's coursing down pretty quickly and it's shallow in the sewer. But if there's a backup, it backs up and it spills out through that broken joint where, it's, where mm -hmm. the pipe was deflected. Uh, so if the town, so there's two answers to your question. <clears throat> Realistically, it is not on fire, but it's not sustainable and something should be done as soon as possible. But secondly, if the town does apply for emergency status, it'll give you more points on the priority list, which will make it more likely that the funding will come through quicker. Mike, I just want to say something, too. I'm Rob Allen. I'm the uh, chairman of the Public Works Board here in Berlin. And this, this Hospital Hill line is, is, uh, is very concerning for us as the board member. It's, it would be disastrous if this line failed on us. Uh, We'd have to, Mike pointed out, there'd have to be, during construction, there'd have to be some bypass pumping. If this failed on us, we would have to do, actually bring in uh, Vactor trucks and pump from an upstream manhole for a time until, because sewer water doesn't stop flowing. You can't shut it off like water, like a water line. So we'd have to do some emergency controls for the, for the, for the sewer, which would mean getting in vector trucks to pump it and take it down to the Montpelier plant until we could arrange some kind of a bypass system. And in the winter time, I'm not sure how we would even do that. So um, for us on the board, this is, this is an urgent matter for us to get done. I, you know, I, uh, I would like to see this done next year for sure. Um, every meeting we, uh, we check in to see what the status is. And I'm, I'm surprised it didn't move too, too much, uh, none that we know of, during the July flood, when, when everything yeah. was so wet and landslides were happening everywhere, it seemed like. Uh, thank goodness this didn't seem to slide any. I uh, called Tom the day after that happened, because <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Oh, it's, it's, it, it scares us that, that we could have a disaster. Uh, it's just hanging like a, like a rock ready to roll over or something, you know? Um, so we really need to, you know, if, if we need to fix it, there's no, there's no option not to do something here. So we need to, hopefully this bond passes, otherwise we're going to have to, we'll have to borrow money from a bank or something to get this done. So. Uh, follow up on that, the state is opening the priority list for applications. Uh, they're going to have documents ready for the municipalities on November 15th. So. If the town votes to move forward with this project, then you could be getting in line for money as early as uh, the spring. The big thing on the SRF program that you're trying to get is the construction money, which is the big, that's the big nut. And that's what all the competition's for between all the other communities. Right now, it's a perfect time to get involved in a project like this because a ton of money has been dumped on the state by the feds because of the COVID situation. Uh, stimulus money that we've been hearing about. Uh, secondly, the state has, through the SRF program, what they call a planning advance, which means that there is money right now, tonight, available to start the design for this project, even if you don't qualify for uh, construction funding next year. I think you will, though. 
But the point is, is the design can start as soon as the town is ready to get you in line for construction and the P-list application, if the town votes to move forward with the project, that should go in as soon as possible. Uh, you could even potentially have money available the 1st of July. For construction. Thank you. Any other questions on Article 2? Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Article 3. Completing water line loop. Shall general <laughs> obligation bonds or notes of the town of Berlin payable from revenues derived from the operation of the town's municipal water system in an amount not to exceed $3,702,000 subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants and aid be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of completing 1.8 miles of water main creating the closed water system, the estimated cost of such improvements being $3,702,000. Uh, who will speak for this? Tom? Yes, thank you, Paul. Uh, <coughs> I have a map back here I could show, but <clears throat> a little handout really says it all. <clears throat> the town built its first water system in 2015. Uh, we've operated it since then. Uh, uh, we're very proud of that water system. It's relatively young and it operates in the black. Uh, not many water systems this young uh, operate in the black. The, the problem we have is uh, our wells are up past the airport off the uh, Dodge, Dodge Farm Road. And so there's a 12 inch line that comes from there down Airport Road that all of the water passes through. If there's a break on that 1.6 mile loop, all the water customers are without water. And, and uh, uh, a 12 inch line is a large line, a lot of water. We have a 420,000 gallon tank, two hours probably to that, that tank would be voided. Right, if we have that. So uh, what the, uh, and, I, um, and Rob will probably talk to a little about this, but the, the, the uh, idea here is to put a redundant line in from the wells coming down Scott Hill Road and connecting to our line on Comstock Road. Um, and that's the $3.7 uh, million project uh, in, a, in a nutshell. Questions on this uh, water line loop? Thank you very much. Well, start with you. Margaret Shelley, by the way. Um, which is the, on the colored map, which is the new one? The red. The, the red? red? Yeah. Okay, I thought so, but I just wanted to make sure. Mm. Search? No, I was just pointing out. Oh, all right. Questions on Article 3? Well, I'm going to make you laugh. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be paid for by the people who are on the sewer, on the, on the water line? Correct. Not by everybody? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Slipboard agree with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. On the town's water? On the town of Berlin's water. Correct. Yes. Not the city of Montpelier's water? Right. Nor Hedges' water system. Both of those operate in this town as well. Go ahead. Tom, uh, as we add sort of the, the project for the new town center, as we're adding more dwellings, are they going to be lowering the amount shared across all users of the water system? The, 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 the more customer base you have, the lower the cost for everybody is. I mean, so the answer is yes. It, it's that building apartments does not occur overnight. Right. We have a 10-year plan to add housing over there at the new town center. We've got the, the one project built, the senior housing. We're doing this 30 units. Um, um, uh, the, the thought is 350 to 500 units of housing there in the, in the new town center in the next 10 years. They will be consumers and customers of this water system. And if there was any expansions, I'm assuming it's the same like units uh, similar to the sewage. 
So if there's any expansion to the hospital or anything else like that, they would incur a greater portion of repaying. Correct. Other questions about the water line loop? Yes. Um, so currently, I think, just brass tax, I think I'm paying about $440 a year towards the bond. Correct. Because four times a year I get a bill and I pay. And so this seems like a large chunk of money. And we're, when we put the new pipe in, are we instantaneously adding any customers to help pay this down? Or is it all of us that currently are on the system? Everybody who's currently on it. All right. So uh, what's that going to do to our bond payments? It's going to go up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the development in a new town center uh, is what we hope is that customer base is going to be added as, as well. Um, so is there any way of knowing, like the, the original system that was put in in 15, part of the reason I bought my house, because I knew there was going to be water. Um, the house didn't have its own source yeah. of water. Um, do you know what that cost? Do you remember? I'm Somewhere just... between six and a half and eight million dollars. Oh, it was that much? Yeah, we got half of that in a grant. Okay. So our bond payments right now are for about three million. Ish. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to. Yeah. And that's a, that was a 40 year note. <clears throat> so do you think like my bond payments are going to double? Or... I'd have to go back. I, I don't have that number. Yeah. I don't have that number here. I mean, to me, that's a big number. We will seek grants here. We haven't found any on, on this project. Hmm. So we don't know what per ERU this is going to jump. No, it's all going to depend on the amount of grants we, we, we have. Uh, to, to, to take Mike's point here, uh, when he said this house isn't on fire, but it's, it's, it's a, a Pending issue that could Im seriously impact the school. All, all there, uh, you know, a, a lot of customer base here. Mm -hmm. um, we need, we need to be able to provide. If this town wants to grow economically. We need to provide good quality water on a reliable basis. We, can, we can't have water outages. You've seen communities around us have water outage, outages for for weeks on end. We cannot do that, right? We cannot do that. Berlin is on a on the cusp of some some growth here, uh, and and we need to fulfill our obligations as a community to serve our our uh, customers. Anything more on the water line loop? <coughs> Let's go to four. The recreational multi-use path. Sell general obligations, note bonds or notes of the town of Berlin, payable from revenues derived from the town's general fund in an amount not to exceed one million six hundred ten thousand dollars, subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants and aid, be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of constructing approximately two miles of recreational multi-use path. The estimated cost of such improvements being one million six hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars. Who is uh, familiar enough with this to handle? Uh, here we go again. Tom. Thank, thank, thank you, Paul. Uh, so this article goes hand in glove with number number three. So if if we are putting a water line on and we're tearing up. Uh, Scott Hill Road, as it's torn up, we want to be able to add bike lanes to that road when we, when we replace it. And, and so that's what the $1.6 million is for, is, is to add those bike lanes. If number three never comes to fruition, I, I doubt number four will ever uh, uh, come to fruition. It just makes no sense. Uh, the, the cost would be I, probably prohibitive if you try to do it on your own outside of the reconstruction for, for uh, the Scott Hill Loop. So it, it's a hand in glove. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, I know there's some members of the Recreation Commission here. Uh, the, they, have, they have a very uh, aggressive schedule to, to put in uh, 
bike trails throughout Berlin. Um, you, you see communities that have put bike trails in, mountain bikes. That, it, it's an economic engine. People are coming from miles around, states around, to come visit communities, spend their dollars uh, in recreation. People want to live in a community where they can recreate. Um, they want good schools, they want clean water, they want uh, access to uh, adequate wastewater, and they want recreation. And um, uh, it's, so it's one of the com uh, cornerstones of the whole economic development plan that the town of Berlin has for the next 10 years. Questions? Yes? I'm just looking at your handout. Yes. <coughs> Uh, and the yellow are proposed trails. Yeah, that was that was that was a, a planning <coughs> document we put in for a grant. We didn't get the grant, so it uh, yeah that's it's a it's it's the commission sat down and we said well th yeah this makes sense. Yeah. Sort of important to note that currently there is not a bike trail along the airport road. There is no no. Or on to Berry Town. For no, that. we want to be there, but it's not there. <laughs> Sir. Gary Shelley, uh, again, uh, so <clears throat> despite what it says here, multi-use multi pass, this is basically just a wide shoulder on the road, right? Uh, it's eight feet. Uh, you know, it's 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 you get you know two ways. If if you've been on uh, uh, the, the the Burlington bike path, it'd be very similar to that. It'd be paved, um, two-way traffic, you know, and, and what you see is <coughs> cottage industries spring up around these facilities. You know, it, it, it may be two miles today, but we want it to be 20 miles in 10 years. Right? That's good. So would this, be, would this be able to be built within the existing right-of-way? That's the anticipation, correct. Yeah. In the back. I, I, um, this isn't really to do with recreation, but I'm just wondering, looking at this, I think this is what tags on with it. Is, is there anything in the plan about addressing people being able to cross the intersection of 62 and Fisher Road? That's always <laughs> in, uh, up for discussion. The, 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 in, in our town center now, and, and which encompasses that area, when a, uh, when a property owner wants to redevelop their property, they're required by our zoning regulations to put sidewalks in. And um, there are several properties being, being discussed to be redeveloped. Um, we're hoping that that intersection can be addressed in, 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 in this time. Uh, so if people put in crosswalks, would then they put in a, like a crossing? Yes. Okay. Tom, is this project cheaper because we're, is it, would this project be cheaper because of the work done with the um, water line? Like if this was done without doing the water line, would it just be more expensive? To Much do? more expensive. Yeah. So this this just happens to be like an opportune time Correct. Correct. to do this. And Correct. then does this do you feel like for the grants that you've been applying for, something you've been applying for a ton, does starting some of these projects that we're looking at starting send any messages or help us at all with future grants? I think what what ends up happening, if you have a bond vote and the community supports that the, the a project like this. This says a lot to the folks who give grant money, right? They say this community is really has has an interest. They have their heart and soul in it, and they're they're willing to put some skin in the game. So I found that, and that, and that's what's called shovel ready. If you're ready to go, you have a greater chance of, of getting funding. So it's one one more step to get you down the road. Yes, sir. Will the multi-use path be simply a wider road, or is it going to be separated from the road to keep bicyclists and walkers safe? We, we haven't got the final design yet. Yeah. Ideally, it would be the latter. But separated. Yeah, ideally, but yeah. we haven't got to that yet. I'll never ride a bike on a road that has cars on it. I've had too many family injured and dead and killed. 
Further questions about the recreational path? Absolutely absurd. Uh, I mean, there's the, the town has uh, parking at its campus. There's parking at uh, uh, Berlin Pond. The school has parking. The the park and ride uh, that just opened a year and a half ago doubles its capacity. There's a lot of parking around. Okay. Yes, in the back. This is a question, <clears throat> or more of a comment, but we're talking about two miles of road, and Mike Begensky, I've lived in this community for 22 years. Whenever I ride my bike, that is the last place that I think about riding. There are so many other places to ride around our town. I'm just wondering the efficacy of putting all that money into it. I understand what Tom is saying about future development and whatnot, but that seems like a lot of money for two miles of of biking in a, in a spot that's really not the primary to bike anyway. We all, all of us that bike, bike around that lovely Berlin pond. So I guess that's my two cents. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Article five, recreational improvements to ice rinks. Shell general obligation bonds or notes of the town of Berlin parrot payable from revenues derived from the town's general fund in an amount not to exceed $775,000, subject to the reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants and aid, be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of installing a solar power generating canopy while creating a four-season recreation facility, the estimated cost of such improvements being $775,000. Who speaks for this, Tom, or is there somebody from the Recreation Committee? I can, or the Rec Commission can jump in as well. Uh, everybody knows that there's an ice rink, and uh, I'm hoping everybody knows there's there's an ice rink at the at the at the town office campus. It's uh, it's really used. Uh, it's it's nature makes the ice. We don't make ice. We don't have a zamboni. All volunteers do the work. Uh, uh, we, we, the Recreation Commission has, has really um, uh, believes, and I've got to say I drink that Kool-Aid as well, is that uh, uh, there are limited recreation opportunities for young, young adults and, and, and um, uh, older adults in our community. So the thought process is to put a canopy over, over, over that, make it a four season, and uh, underneath that canopy, during spring, um, summer, and fall, you could do basketball, pickleball, uh, pickleball, volleyball, various different recreational activities um, um, that many communities have, but which we don't have in, in our community. Um, so uh, again, if Jeff or Tom, if you have anything to add, you're more than welcome. Uh, well, uh, I'm uh, Tom Willard. Um, <clears throat> I look this old because I've been maintaining that room. <laughs> it was uh, it was built in 19 I think it was 1995. It was built with all uh, money that we raised uh, from town and businesses with no town general fund money. It's been very popular. It's at a location where we have uh, security. The police department's there. The town officers are there. There's plenty of parking. Um, and it, it, there was a lot of talk about some grants and putting in a, a canopy for solar, 760 kW solar project, and we said, it doesn't make any sense to put it over a parking lot, let's put it over the rink. It would increase the use, uh, we, we, you know, you'd be able to play hockey in the wintertime uh, when it's snowing. Um, and you could turn, the, the lights are there, the electrical is all underground systems. Um, it's going to need a lot of work in terms of the subsurface uh, construction and drainage in order to support tennis or pickleball or stuff like that. But gee, with the lights there and the canopy, it can be a year-round facility. It could be, I think, a community builder as well. Uh, now in the winter, the community is all winter ice hockey skating type 
people, but it could be a bigger community, I think, uh, amenity for the town. So um, I think it makes a lot of sense, and uh, I think it would would really, uh, really be a real benefit to the town. I'm uh, Jeff Farrell. Uh, rec I'm on the Recreation Commission. I also live right next door to the skating rink. Like, I get to hear all the hockey pucks hitting the boards at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's great um, because people are out using that facility and, and having fun on it. Um, and one of the things that we don't think about and Tom just kind of glossed over is the maintenance of that, of that thing that is there for everybody in the town and people from all around the area to come and use. And one of the other views that I get to have is 3 o'clock in the morning when the lights are on and Tom is out in, uh, in a raincoat and, and a snow, and snowmobile pants spraying water onto the rink. And, uh, and, and then later in the day when it, snows, when it snows two feet and either I go out with the snowblower or Tom is out with the snowblower or one of our other rare volunteers is out with the snowblower blowing the snow off, off of the rink and, um, and making it useful for everybody who, who wants to be able to use it. Um, when we, like Tom said, when we came up with the idea of the canopy, we thought, you know, oh my gosh, something over this thing would just make everybody's lives so much better. We could put the disco ball in there and everything would be great. Um, you know, a couple of skate and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but the, uh, but, we looked at it and, it and it was extremely expensive to put a roof over the thing. So Tom came, Tom mentioned, hey, there's money for a solar thing. And that was what we looked at. We said, hey, if we can get some money for a solar thing, let's generate some power, put it over the skating rink, make it so, make it so we can use it. So when we go out, we don't necessarily have to snow blow it every time it snows. Um, we don't have to, Repack it and then re and then re ice it. If we if we go too long without snow blowing it after it snows, it's there all the time so that it's available. With a, if we can put a substrate down underneath it and have smooth ice. Has anybody skated on the rink recently? Has anybody been afraid that they were going to lose a body part because they were going to fall into a hole on the ice? Um, We've all been concerned about that. It's a great natural feature, but it's a natural feature um, that, that makes it a concern for us to have, have little kids, people with less stability, people learning how to skate, people who are really good skaters and used to skating indoors, uh, coming out and finding out that this is what it's like to skate outdoors and there's a hole somewhere. Um, so. Those are the kind of things that we've been concerned about, and we, we really want to have a good facility. Like Tom said, it's right next to the police department. You can drop your kids off. They can be there in a relatively safe, somewhat controlled environment where kids can go and make good decisions for themselves without necessarily a whole lot of adult supervision, um, but, they have the, but they have access to emergency services right there, feet away from the skating rink. Um, and how many other facilities do we have in town for the public? Places to get together, places to congregate, meet, play sports, do whatever. There's a little park over on Muzzy Road. There's a, um, well right now, the road um, going down past, what's that, Payne Turnpike North is community park, but only because there's a hole in it yeah. and it's blocked <laughs> off. Um, the, uh, that'll probably not be a park for long. Then, um, and then uh, that's, that's about it. So, well, we've got, we've got the mountain. We can go up and ride bikes and, and cross-country ski and do things like that. But how many places do we have where a kid can go and play kind of on their own? And we don't really, we don't really have a whole lot of that. So. Me, the neighbor who's going to listen to the basketballs bounce at 2 o'clock in the morning. Me, the neighbor who listens to the hockey pucks hit the boards at 2 o'clock in the morning. Send it. Let's have it there so we can have people who can um, come out and enjoy our community here.
for a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Brett Murphy, West Berlin. I understand the benefit of having a canopy over the over the play surface, but what is the thought behind the usage of the electricity generated from the solar array? Is it going to be net metered sold, and or is it going to be used by the town buildings, or how how is that going to benefit the town to have a solar array above it? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll swing it this way. Uh, so Jeff mentioned that. You know, an idea of, of uh, some grant funding. It really wasn't grant funding. Uh, there are developers out there that uh, that I've spoken to, and the cost the cost of the solar is about three hundred thousand dollars ish. Uh, um, that we would sell the rights to the electricity to that developer, and they would build it the canopy for three hundred thousand dollars. So the town of Berlin has no skin in the game on the electric. It's it's up to those developers who have paid for it, paid for it. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Adam French in Berlin here. Um, the question that I have, I'm just wondering what people think about, is around. Well. You mentioned a, a good facility, creating a good facility over here. It sounds like it's going to be something fantastic, a great facility, and it's like a, it would be like a no-brainer for our community to do this for the for our for our children and, and young people. Um, I'm wondering about the, the 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 more traffic we would get there from other towns, and I'm wondering how people feel about that. People coming in from you know from Northfield and Montpelier and any other towns. Um, and the, the, the traffic increase for that. I'm wondering if anybody have any, any thoughts about that. Any other thoughts? I mean, Tim, we're right on the corner. We're the, we're, the pri we're the prime candidate for the people who get the traffic from other towns. My thought was, Jeff kept, and he's right, I do hear the pucks, I hear the noise. Um, we could probably shut the power off at 11, or we'd come up sure. with something, I would imagine. I'm sorry, the question. Oh, about the traffic. Well, Shed Road already has, we have tens of thousands of trucks that go up and down Shed Road every year. I guess I'm not talking about tra uh, car traffic. I'm talking about people, more people coming in from other communities yeah. to, to use the, those facilities, oh, okay. you know what I mean? Well, uh, and not necessarily our own yeah. from our own community. Right. I don't know if you can have somebody stand in there checking your residence. I'm just so wondering what, if there were that. thoughts on that. Okay. Like, right no, I don't now, have any thoughts on that. Yeah. Right now, okay. I think it's great a, to have the kids playing, and people you, playing is great. If you got a, if you got a kid here in town, where do you go now? You go to Montpelier. You go to the rec fields in Montpelier. You go to the, the nice facility that Barrytown has that, for some people in Berlin, is probably a 40-minute drive from their house um, to go to the, the Barrytown skate park, dog park, baseball field, um, thing next to the elementary school, middle school, elementary school in Barrytown. Um, maybe you go down to Northfield to use their pool. Um, maybe you go, um, maybe you just don't go anywhere um, because you, there's, there's, you don't think there's anything to do. Um, so people coming from other communities, you know, East Montpelier has its own little skating rink that they put together. Um, the, uh, the there's Capitol skating rink down 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 at the uh, at the Capitol building in Montpelier. Um, very rink with the cover over it. Yeah, and so there are other places that other people do go. Um, the one thing that I would say about our facility is that if the nice thing about our facility is we probably would not encounter some of the problems that they have at those other places because we have the police department <laughs> sitting right next to the skating rink. Um, and it's kind of obvious when there's five police cars parked there. So, so, so I'm selfish. I, I, I want this community to grow. Um, we have a nighttime population of 3,000 and a daytime population of 12,000. We, we need to get some of those people to move to Berlin. Help with our taxes, you know, buy our water, use our sewer system, uh, shop at the grocery stores, 
Uh, and what if they're going to if they're coming here to, to play hockey or basketball and are living in Northville and say, oh my goodness, I'm I'm this close to the interstate. Uh, honey, let's move to Berlin, right? And and and, and uh, uh, that's why people move. That's why they have amenities that people want. You know, and they'll buy gas at our grocery stores and, and all that. Sure. Okay. Hi, my name is George. <clears throat> now a reality check. I need my wife to read because I need glasses. Okay. Well, we're both fiscal conservatives, and I know that everybody's talking very hopefully and cheerfully about all these plans. Um, my concern is the condition of the of the the country and the condition of every time I get my statement um, from my retirement, it goes down every month. Down and down and down. The prices go up and up and up. We're over 33 trillion in debt as a country. We have one trillion in debt, in credit card debt. Citizen, Citizen Bank failed just two days ago. I don't know if people are aware of that. Major bank failure. And um, there's poor bond market performance that, that cu cuts into that. Um, and mortgage-backed securities, the largest mortgage-backed security bond fund, ETF traded, MBB, it's rated triple A. If you go down into the details, you go onto iShares on, and look into the details <coughs> on it, the underlying things are not triple A. You can get down to FICA scores on everything that's underlying, everything that's in there. I think that we're headed for a big crash. And I don't think that it's going to be a crash like 2008. They've kicked the, they've kicked the can down the road time and time and time again. And what they're doing with the, with the mortgage-backed securities now, this is residential. This is not even commercial. And usually commercial is considered to be um, much more risky. And these, these, uh, these uh, mortgage-backed securities, it's residential. It's actually performing worse than the commercial. So I think that we're headed towards a crash. Right. And I 1927 think that, crash, 1929, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think that it's going to be, because it's not going to be 2008 again. It's going to be worse. And I think that we're headed there. Um, Fitch downgraded the US long-term foreign currency issuer default rating from AAA to AA three months ago. A day after they, they did that, um, Fitch downgraded Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to AA the very next day. So my concern is that we're spending, I've never, I don't remember ever seeing this, this many things of such large amounts to vote for on a single, on a single vote in, in terms of money. And my concern is that we'll be spending a lot of money. Now, maybe some of it's necessary, the sewer line and the water line. But in terms of having a center, now, I don't know. If we don't vote on the center, what happens, what happens then if, we, don't, if we, we vote down the bond? Ask the select board. What happens if, if it gets voted down? Well, we don't get the money to take and uh, improve the, uh, the town center we will probably have to drop it. The, the thing to remember, though, is that if you're going to take and uh, look at uh, financials, our taxes are affordable enough because of that shopping, uh, because of that mall. If we do not take care of the mall and help them become, uh, stay solvent, then what you're saying will happen in just Berlin, not the nation because they supply a lot of tax revenue for the town. Okay, well, so what does a Berlin town center have to do with, the, with that? They own the land. They own the land for the, the, for the town center. The mall owns the land. The mall owns the land. Yeah. So, well, that's my major concern. I just think that there's a lot of spending here, and just with the circumstances financially, you know, um, I'm concerned about the future that okay. we're going. We've been up here over 30 years, and all it seems to be is spend, 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 spend for all of these, like, fluff projects. Look, at, I don't care. I'm 77, you know, I, how many years I got left, you know. But, I mean, if you guys got kids or whatever, they're going to inherit your debt, and their kids are going to probably inherit your debt. But you just can't think of the present. I, mean, I don't even think anybody here really even thinks about the future. 
you know, maybe a month, two months, a year, next bill. This is life. We're in for a big bang. Big, big bang. Look at Ukraine, look at Israel, and this bum we got as a president is spending money hand over fist. It's going yeah. to come down. It's, it's going to have to come down. You know? You just say, and you ain't got Adolf Hitler to bail you out like you did in 1939. I mean, we're going down the shitter. Anyway, that's mine. Okay. Yeah, that's all we wanted to say. Thank so. you. Thank you. Um, something else on Article 5. That's the one I would like to speak about, yeah. getting back to that one. Uh, the two gentlemen that are on a rec uh, committee. <clears throat> I'm wondering, do we have any data of how many kids use that facility? <clears throat> Only anecdotally. Do, do we have, have you ever seen anything with, uh, anecdotally, we have, there's probably 20 to 30 kids, like on a weekend night, um, out there using that, using that facility at night. Uh, and when I say anecdotally, I mean looking out my window or when I'm over there. Um, so 20 or 30 kids, and, there, and that's people coming and going throughout the, throughout the day. Um, weeknights, um, a little bit less, but you're looking at four or five kids um, coming and going, families showing up um, pretty regularly throughout the day. I've uh, been out with homeschool groups that come and use it um, during the day uh, as like their phys ed for homeschooling to get together and um, get and, and use it. Um, so, you know, throughout the week or throughout the winter, you look several hundred heads show up and, and, and use okay. it. That's good information to yeah. know. And we can all, I guess, compare that in terms of our use and the per person use. Um, <coughs> Second question was, in order for the pickleball courts and all the other envisioned improvements, you got to do something. You're going to have to spend more money to resurface that uh, the ground. Is that part of the? Did that's part of it. Yeah. Was that part? Of, that's that's yeah. part of this. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we're going to get and, and this the other part. A I was flat ground underneath and a roof overhead. Okay, yeah. and a roof that. Not just a place you can connect the lights, but a roof. That's because yeah, I, okay. I was a little you unclear can. when yep. people were. Okay, yeah, it's not going to be a a civic center by any means, but if you can imagine a pavilion type thing with a uh, with a with a hard surface underneath, like a shed roof. Shed roof. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Very good. And thoughts about monitoring that because one of the things I taught school in Montpelier for 30 years I now monitor their rec department you know, mm -hmm. in evenings and sometimes no kids show up sometimes the whole basketball team shows up so, right sometimes you know, the whole I understand team. Yeah, you whatever know. yeah but you know in terms of if this really does take off I mean do we have do the, are the police expected to monitor this situation no but I, I mean Kids need free play time and free play space where they okay. can where they can be without necessarily be without um, somebody standing on their throat telling them what to do all the time. I bet those two would have supported me. But uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but the uh, uh, so um, yeah so we're not necessarily going to have a hall monitor out there. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Good. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Uh, nobody's mentioned it, but I think it would be an excellent arena for like a cornhole league most of the summer. Sure. Yeah. Undercover. Yeah. I mean, not just kids. I mean, a lot of stuff. Yeah. It, it would be a good center, you know, rain or shine for that. What, what's good about this recreation commission, they got a lot of young folks on it. You know, my hair is the color of your hair, you know, and, and, uh, and they've got a lot of juice right now and they, they have kids and it's just wonderful the energy that they're bringing to this community and we as a community need to ride their coattails because they're they are the future and, and it's it's a bright future for the town of Berlin yes. I'd just like to express my appreciation Tom and the others that have maintained that rank mainly Tom <laughs> <laughs> that one of its distinct advantages is that there are not 
being players and games and it constantly being scheduled. I wouldn't be skating. There's so little free skating time at any of the surrounding rinks. I'm not sure that that's speaking in favor of however many thousands of dollars, but to this point, I appreciate it. Else on this? Yes. Yes. So I'm Doreen Lane from East Road, and I too am concerned about the future. So uh, every year, I've been here I think 12 years now, and every year I get my tax bill and I go, oh my God, it's going up again. <laughs> and I, I want to know, I want you to know that I'm, I'm actually losing capacity here. The prices of everything is going up. And, when you're my primary income, I'm, you know, no secret, I'm retired. I, that's not going up that fast. So my question for you is, what's next? What will you, is there something that you know about that's going to be another big bill that you're going to be coming back to us for? The, the town now owns 3.8 acres in, in, the, in the town center. They have designs to, to develop it. They, they, depending on how they do it, they could enter into an agreement with a developer and lease the ground. Uh, that's, I think, something in the, if that's what happened, that would, could, could be something that the select board would come back to the constituency with. Uh, again, that adds value to the community, right? If, if they put in housing, 40 units of housing, and you have 40 families move in, you got 40 families now paying taxes to the town of Berlin. Um, it, 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 every item on here is an economic development engine. There are no frills here. This is looking at the growth of this town and looking to hopefully address your, 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 your problem. Again, we have 3,000 people <coughs> that pay taxes right, and live here. We have 12,000 people visit our town every day. Mm -hmm. We've got to capture some of that 12,000 and, and have, them, have them in our community. I, I, I agree with that, but I, I, need, I need less spending yeah. overall because the reality is really hitting hard. So please know that. And, and thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Anything else? Yes. I'm Flo well. Smith, and I'm on the local select board, and I'm very proud to be. And I thank everyone for being here tonight and for your involvement and sharing your views, whether they're for or against. But I am extremely for this. And what Tom just said, we are very cost conscious on the board. It may look like we're trying to spend a lot, <coughs> But we look at ways that we can do it that's going to be beneficial to the community for the long haul. <coughs> and along that line, we're looking at local options tax. And that will be, to your point, that will be very helpful. Like Tom said, so many people come into our community at all times of the day from other communities. And back to Adam's question, I wholeheartedly would love to have other towns come yes. if this passes. Uh, the more, the merrier and do for our youth, they're our future. And um, so I appreciate you all being here and sharing your views. Thank you. That sounds like it. Okay. Yes. Uh, on the local options tax, the one thing is we pay local options tax to, yeah. to Barry because our zip code is Barry when we buy anything on the internet. That is an excellent question, oh, wow. and a past select board member, Carl Parton, who's here tonight, he was on our board, and he actually brought that to our attention, yeah. and that was very keen uh, information for us, so that's something that we are looking at as well. I don't know how that changes. But. Get our own post office. <laughs> what? Get, Get our, our own, own post, post office. office. <laughs> yeah, that would make the difference. Sure, as your zip codes. The polls open tomorrow at 7? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. and close at 7, 7 p.m. <laughs> and in order to get out of this meeting, I'll need a motion to adjourn. Excuse, excuse me, Paul. And that's at the town office, not here. Right. That's correct. So, we, so moved and second. 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 second.
All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow.